We may take final character design for granted, but if you stay on the internet long enough, you are bound to find some stuff that you just cannot unsee. And that, of course, is original concept design. What else would we be talking about there, huh? There are a number of characters who we just can't imagine any other way. But when it comes to character design, it can be a long and arduous process that can take years to get right. That means that there's a lot of bizarre, interesting, and sometimes downright creepy designs along the way that, no matter how hard you try, you just cannot erase from your brain. In this video, we'll take a look at 15 different characters that look way different from their original design, sometimes for the best, other times arguably for the worse, including characters from family-friendly favorites designed to haunt your dreams for eternity, weird-looking hybrid animals, and just the plain old weird. Get ready to go to some kind of upside-down world where your favorite characters look like some kind of an extra in a Guillermo del Toro movie. Like many, Harry Potter was probably a huge part of your childhood, and probably adulthood. You've probably read the entire series, and you have a clear visual as to what the character looks like. One of the most important characters for the movies to get right was the main antagonist, Voldemort, and Ray Fiennes' interpretation of the character is pretty in keeping with the portrayal in the book. But even before Fiennes was cast as the Dark Lord, Voldemort does appear earlier on in the series. We see his younger self in Chamber of Secrets, and as his post-death self in Sorcerer's slash Philosopher's Stone, grafted on the back of Quirrell's head. Voldemort's appearance is similar to the final appearance we see later on in the series, but his original look was nearly very very different. The original design was much more snake-like, with a long pointed face and large sharp teeth, and the look is enough to haunt your dreams for the rest of your life. Thank goodness the studio decided against this design, as there would be a lot of people undergoing therapy right now. It isn't just Voldemort that was a lot scarier in the earlier designs. The Dementors, which make their appearance in Prisoner of Azkaban, were in keeping with the book and creepy enough as it is. But the original concept was also a lot creepier. The Dementors we got were eerie and unsettling, but both original designs elicit both these emotions and then some. In one, we see a Dementor look reminiscent of the Grim Reaper with a long dark cloak, hands tucked into pockets and the face down to the floor. Another shows a large a skeletal figure which drags its spine across the floor that's paired with a long black cloak that falls from the shoulders. Both are terrifying and would be more suited, appearing in a creepy period horror movie than a family-friendly movie based on a book aimed at a younger audience. Star Wars fans argue on a lot of things, like Last Jedi, for example, but one thing that I'm pretty sure we can agree on is that the child, known colloquially as Baby Yoda, is pretty darn cute, right? I mean, just look at that face, I just want to smush those cheeky wikis! <sighs> okay, sorry, got a bit carried away there. The final design of Baby Yoda is unequivocally adorable, but the original design? Yeah, not so much. The original look has sharp, pointed teeth, a larger, wrinkly face with tufts of scraggly hair sprouting out from its head, and looks a lot more like Shrek than Yoda. I can't unsee it, but I also kind of don't want to look away. I'm sorry, I know, all babies are meant to be cute and all, but that one looks like it fell from the Yoda tree and hit every branch on the way down. Another character who is adorable in the Star Wars franchise is Chewbacca. Many fans will know Chewbacca was designed to replicate a dog as Chewie is a trusted and lovable companion, just like our canine friends. But the original look isn't quite so dog-like. The earlier design shows Chewie wearing short sleeves for some unknown reason, and has large sunken yellow eyes, vampire-esque ears, a ridged head and beard. He looks more like the lost brother of Sasquatch than Chewie, and I for one am not for it. Thankfully though, they went for a much more aesthetically pleasing Chewie, and not one that makes you kind of uncomfortable. Imagine if that Chewie had been in eight Star Wars movies? <laughs> We may have gotten a lot of Chewie in the live-action Star Wars series, but one we didn't get to see a whole lot of was Darth Maul. While he does make a resurgence in the animated series, his only live-action outings have been The Phantom Menace and The Solo Movie, but his appearance in Phantom Menace has been seen by some as the saving grace of the prequels. While the Maul we know kinda looks Satan-esque, the original concept had light blue skin, fully white eyes, and long red dreadlocks. The look isn't too bad, but it's unclear whether this iteration of the character would have had the same effect as the final design. Back to Yoda now. Yeah, the child isn't the only one who had a questionable original design. 
One of the reasons Yoda's popularity is what it is, is because at first you don't assume Yoda is a Jedi Master because he looks so small and frail, and at first just seems to serve as comic relief. But we later learn of the range of his power and wisdom, which are much larger than his small frame. But the original character looked even more unassuming than the final design, with Yoda designed to look like a garden gnome. The drawing even comes complete with a red hat and a bushy beard, and his face looks just as confused as we are. Yeah, Star Wars dodged a bullet with that one. Joker is easily not only one of the most iconic characters in the Batman world, but in society in general, and his status was only elevated by Heath Ledger's sensational performance as the Crown Prince of Crime. Ledger added a lot of himself to the character, and even had a part to play in the general look of the character with him applying his own makeup. But the original concept was even more thuggish and terrifying than the final product, with the character having short, spiky green hair, more similar to Leto's Joker than Ledger's, as well as more prominent scars and sunken eyes. This design I'm pretty sure was replicated after the boogeyman who lived under my bed as a child. One of the reasons Avatar is so popular is because of its rich visual detail, and that is showcased in the indigenous peoples of Pandora, the Na'vi. The original concept for them isn't too different from the final product, but there are some notable differences. Primarily, their head shape is more typically alien, with the long, pinched nose, as well as a large forehead. Also, while the dreadlocks are still there, they don't appear to be hair-like, but are more similar to fluorescent tubes. All in all, it makes the Na'vi a little more off-putting, but it's kind of hard to say exactly why. On the subject of aliens, one of the most popular extraterrestrials is E.T., the so-called friendly alien. If, like me, you find the final design terrifying, yeah, no, yeah, okay, it's just me, but the original look was supposed to be even more frightening. Originally, the movie was supposed to be more horror-based, and the aliens represented that, with them having a more reptilian look with large, glassy eyes and a menacing look, and are somehow even more tortoise-looking than the final design. And great, now there are two versions to keep me up at night. I am not gonna sleep for the rest of the year. Transformers will always be a controversial subject, but one thing that will remain a constant is that Optimus Prime is awesome. This is in part due to his design, but weirdly, like Chewie, his look was meant to originally be more dog-like. His face is much more snout-like, and the way his ears protrude at the top is meant to be much more reminiscent of a dog than a deceptive fighting machine. Tim Burton isn't exactly known for having a bland aesthetic, and often has a number of eccentric characters in his movies, which are usually played by Johnny Depp. One of these is the Mad Hatter in Burton's Alice in Wonderland movie, who, to be honest, looks weird enough and eccentric enough as it is. But the original concept was even more baffling. The character can be seen with strange glasses, a large green hat, a jacket that looks like it's made out of brass, and only a half mustache. Yeah, somehow, that's even weirder. There aren't many better bromances out there, are there? Well, that nearly wasn't the case, as the original concept for the movie had Woody as the primary villain, in the same mold as the Prospector in Toy Story 2. This is replicated in his initial designs, where he is made to look like a creepy ventriloquist doll that would make for a weird spin-off for Child's Play more than a Pixar movie. Buzz also has a stranger design, with the character originally having a short and stocky stature. But Woody and Buzz aren't the only Pixar characters that went through an awkward trial period. While making Monsters, Inc., Pixar spent a long time trying to get the look of the characters right, meaning there are a lot of prototypes for the characters of Mike and Sully. One of the first of Sully drawings showed him having multiple eyes, long horns on the side of his head, and tentacles instead of feet. Mike also looked strange, with one of the drawings of him sporting a punky hairstyle and a large blue eye, which kind of gives me the creeps. Jurassic Park is known for how beautifully they brought the dinosaurs back to life through an array of visual effects, and let's face it, who doesn't think of that kitchen scene when you think of Velocal Raptors? While the science of the plot is rather questionable, we let it slide because, well, dinosaurs. But before Jurassic World came out, some leaked concept art suggested that the studio were close to making a near-baffling choice which really would have pushed what the audience would allow. The concept art shows a weird dinosaur-human hybrid with the plot plot reportedly around humans crossed with dinosaurs and dogs as a form of biological warfare. Yeah, I don't understand either. ILM have since said that this artwork isn't official, but either way, this image just won't get out of my head. 
Last on our list is another Michael Bay entry, the 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. The movie wasn't exactly popular or well received, but the original design would have gone down even worse with fans, with the teenagers actually being aliens. The original design shows an insanely jacked turtle with a face that looks more like a shark than a turtle. Although the movie wasn't exactly popular, it did warrant a sequel, but if they had gone with this original design, I doubt that the turtle aliens would have had a second outing. What did you make of these designs? Any that you liked? Are you glad that they remained just designs? Let us know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to Screen Rant for this and more. See ya!